on it. So today we are continuing with example number three. The question is that find y dash if sine x plus y equals to y square cos x. Okay, let's do it. Example number three. Uh, did you have any question regarding the previous sessions? Uh, no, nothing yet, except for the last one, the, the one about the sine and the cosine. This is the one we're doing right, right now, example two. Um, mm -hmm. It was a bit confusing, but then I got it. Oh, okay. okay. We have to go, uh, find out y dash, which is which means we have to find out dy over dx. So the question is sine x plus y equals to y square cos x. This is the equation that is given to us using implicit differentiation. We have to find out dy over dx. Okay, differentiating each side of the equation. So with respect to x, d over dx, y square cos x. On this side, can we apply chain rule? Because sine is an outer function and there's an inner function that is x plus y. Right? Yes. So the derivative of sine is cos x plus y. And then taking the derivative inverse uh, function, which is x plus y. Okay, now on the right side of the equation, which is we have to apply the product rule because there are two functions, which is y square and cos x. So using the product rule, we have to write y square first, and then we have to take the derivative of cos x, which will be sine x, right? Yeah, but for this one, do you have to use the one like we did last time? Like first is chain rule, and then there is product rule, and then there is like this? Um, are you talking about this one? Yeah, because there is an inner, there is an inner and an outer. Mm -hmm. There isn't any inner and outer. How come? Like, like let's say, for example, this. The last thing you wrote on the left, cosine x plus y. Doesn't isn't cosine like the outer and then x plus y is yeah. the inner? Yeah, this function we have applied chain rule. We uh, we took the derivative of inner function, outer function, which was uh, which becomes cos x plus y, and then we took the inner derivative of inner function, which was x plus y. Here we have only x, not x plus y, so we can so we can't take uh, apply the chain rule. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay, so y square as it is taking the derivative of cos x, which becomes minus sine x, and then the plus sign of the formula. And then we have cos x as it is, and taking the derivative of y square with respect to x. Um, power first, minus one from the power, and then taking the derivative of y, which becomes two y dy by dx. Is it clear? Yes. So cos x plus y. Uh, if we differentiate the x with respect to x, it becomes one. Right? Mm. And if we differentiate the y with respect to x, it becomes dy over dx is equals to y minus y square sine x plus 2y cos x dy by dx. What we have to find out? We have to find out dy by dx. So we have to arrange our equations. 
um, well, let's just multiply first and then rearrange it. Cos x plus y, cos x plus y multiplied with one plus dy by dx. So cos x plus y multiplied with, multiplied with one, it becomes cos x plus y plus sign and then cos x plus y D, dy by dx is equals okay. to minus y square sine x plus 2y cos x dy by dx. Okay, now taking the dy by d, no, dx term aside uh, on the one side and the um, cos x plus y minus y square sine x other side of the equation. So minus y square sine x as it is and taking cos x plus y that side it becomes minus cos x plus y cos x plus y dy by dx and taking this term that side so it becomes minus 2y cos x dy by dx is it clear yes okay taking dy by dx common can I write y dash instead of dy by dx? Yeah, because uh, derivative. Yeah, uh, there are various ways to write uh, the derivatives. Either we can write dy by dx or y dash or f dash of x. Mm, yeah. Okay. So y dash equals to y dash cos x plus y. We are taking y dash common. So it becomes cos x plus y minus 2y cos x mm. is equals to y square sine x. Y. Oh, okay, okay, because, okay, this is the same one. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. It was y, okay, it was minus y square sine x and minus cos x plus y. Is it clear? Yes. Now, y dash equals to minus y square sine x minus cos x plus y divided by cos x plus y minus 2y cos x. This is the derivative of the function. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, now let's back to the book. Okay, let's do example number four, which is, which is we have to uh, double differentiate the function. Uh, the function is x raised, uh, raised to the power four plus y raised to the power four is equals to 16. And we have to take the double derivative of this function. Example number. The function is x raised to the power 4 plus y raised to the power 4 is equals to 16. Okay, now let's take the first derivative dy by dx of x raised to the power 4 plus y raised to the power 4 is equals to dy by dx of 16. Okay, the derivative of a constant is 0 and the derivative of x4 becomes power first minus one from the power and yeah that's all for x cube plus power first minus one from the power so it becomes y cube and then taking the derivative of y is it clear for x cube is equals to minus 4y cube dy by dx. Min, uh, 4 is cancelled out on both sides of the equation. So y dash becomes x cube over y cube and we have minus sign. This is the first derivative of the function. For the second derivative, 
we have to double differentiate the function. So it becomes y double dash. Now both the functions are in uh, quotient form. So we can apply the quotient rule. Uh, it's f of x and it's g of x. So the formula is g of x as it is taking the derivative of we have written the minus sign of the function outside so um, g of x and then taking the derivative of f of x so it becomes 3x square minus sign of the formula and then x cube as it is and taking the derivative of y cube so it becomes 3y square dy by dx divided by y cube whole square y double derivative is equals to minus 3x square y cube minus 3x cube y square and can we write dy by dx as y dash divided by y6 So anytime we can write uh, we can write uh, y, y y dash instead of uh, dy over dx. Yeah, we can. Okay. Y dash is equals to minus x cube over y cube. So we can write. Uh, instead of y cube minus x3 over y3. So minus 3x square y cube minus 3x cube uh, y square y dash is minus x cube over y cube divided by y6. Okay, can we take anything common from the numerator? 3x. Uh, mm -hmm. 3? Okay, okay 3. And uh, we can take x square common. That's x square and x cube. Mm -hmm. And then right. y, y square. And then y. Okay, uh, before uh, taking the common, we have to cancel out this y. Which will become only why? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. And yes, it is only. x cube y square is cancel out so it's only left y so y square y cube was cancel out so only left with y okay let's take the common now uh, inside it's left y cube minus 3x3 um, minus minus uh, becomes plus okay and then x3 plus x3 multiplied with x3 becomes 6 over y. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay, taking the LCM or cross multiplying y3 multiply with y, it becomes y4 plus 3x6. Wait, wait, we have taken three already common, so we know we don't need to write three here. We already took three common. So y cube, y4 plus x6 divided by y. Y 
y double dash equals to uh, one minute. when we already have taken x three x square common okay so inside it was left y cube only and then minus minus becomes plus and we, are, we have already taken x square common so inside is left only y four x four is is it clear to you we have taken three x square common yeah yeah, three x, yeah. so only x raised to the power four is left inside hmm. And then minus three x square y four plus x four divided by y six. Can I take uh, this y six outside and multiply with denominator? Uh, denominator. It's like this. Inverse proportion. Minus three x square y4 y4 plus x4 divided by y multiply with if if i take the uh, multiply the y6 because it's divisible in the uh, numerator in the denominator so if i uh, write in the proportion form it becomes 1 over y6 okay and then we have minus 3x square y4 plus x4 divided by y7. Uh, was this point clear to you? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so going back to the function, our original function was x4 plus y4. And we have x plus y4. So instead of x4 plus y4, can we write only uh, y? Because that was given to us. The um, x4 plus y4 is equal to 16. So instead of writing x4 plus y4, can we write 16? How come 16? Uh, because the original function was given that x4 plus y4 is 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So instead of writing x4 plus y4, we can write the value that is 16. So it's minus 3x square, 16 divided by y raised to the power 7. So 3 into 16 is 48. x square over y7. And that is a double derivative of a function is it clear yeah okay okay let's back to this uh, book so we have got this double derivative which is minus 48 x square over y7 okay now the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions uh, okay so far we have studied the derivatives of sin x, cos x, tan x, sec, cot, and cos x. Now, if the function is in this form, it's, is in its inverse form, sin inverse x, cos inverse x, and likewise cos x inverse x, then what will be their derivatives? So here is the list of all the inverse trigonometric functions derivatives. The derivative of sine inverse x is this, one over square root of one minus x square. Then the derivative of cos inverse x, tan inverse, cos x, say cot inverse. These are the formulas that we have to uh, memorize to find out the derivatives of the inverse trigonometric functions. 
and i think they have only solved one question uh, that is example number five on the inverse trigonometric functions so let's do this the question is that differentiate y equals to yeah, the question has two parts okay the question has two parts uh, the part a is y equals to one over sine inverse x and the part b is f of x equals to x tan inverse square root of x okay let's do the part a and b it is example number five and the part a is y equals to one over sine inverse x and the part b is f of x okay f of x equals to x arc sin square root x okay let's do the part a which is one over sine inverse x mm, okay can i write sine inverse x like this Can I write it like this? Yeah, because we take it up. Yeah, in the denominator, it was positive coefficient of one. So we took it to the uh, numerator. So it, it becomes minus one. Okay, now can we apply the power rule? Power first and yes. uh, uh, minus one from the power. So it becomes sine inverse x minus two. And then applying the chain rule. So uh, taking the derivative of sine inverse x, right? Hmm. So going back to the book, okay, let's, let's first simplify and then find out the derivative of sine inverse x. So y equals to minus um, one over sine inverse x power two. Is it clear? I, I just took minus two to the denominator. So it becomes sine inverse x raised to the power two. And then the derivative of sine inverse x is, okay, the derivative of sine inverse x is one over square root, uh, one minus x square. Did you, did you say anything? No, no, nothing. Okay. So it is minus one in the denominator or in the numerator and sine inverse x raised to the power two, one minus x square in the denominator. In, uh, in the denominator. This is the answer. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, now let's do the part B. Okay. Arc 10 is 10 inverse x. We can write 10 inverse x arc 10 or arc cos. So it becomes cos inverse. Arc sine. So it is sine inverse. Is, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So f dash of x equals to uh, which rule can we apply? What is that rule? Yeah, there are two uh, functions. So x as it is taking the derivative of arc. 10 inverse, or oh, I mean 10 inverse. Taking the derivative of 10 inverse square root x plus keeping 10 inverse square root x as it is and then taking the derivative of x. 
Is it clear? Okay, now let's find out the derivative of 10 inverse x. Um, the derivative of 10 inverse x is 1 over 1 plus x square. The derivative of 10 inverse x is 1 over 1 plus x square. There was 1, so they wrote uh, uh, there was x as an angle or as an inner function, so they wrote x raised to the power uh, 2. Now we have in as an inner function, we have square root x instead of x. So our derivative for 10 inverse square root x will be 1 over 1 plus square root x whole square. Is it is it making sense to you? Yes. Okay. So it becomes 1 over 1 plus x so let's write it here one over one plus x okay now we have inner function as well we have to take the derivative of inner function and then 10 inverse x as it is 10 inverse square root x as it is and then becomes 1. Okay, f dash of x equals to x 1 plus x. Okay, the derivative of square root x is power first minus 1 from the power. So it becomes minus half. Is, is it clear how, how we took the derivative of square root x? No. Okay. dy by dx of x half. Okay. Uh, okay. After moving the x square root, so power first minus one from the power. So it becomes half x minus half. Is, is it clear now? Oh, yeah. Okay. The normal. Yeah. Normal. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, we have done it before. So it's yeah. plus sign and 10 inverse x. Okay, f dash of x equals to um, in the denominator we have 2, 1 plus x. And in the uh, numerator, we have x multiplied with x raised, uh, multiplied with x raised to the power minus half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it becomes base same, power will be added. If we add the power, it becomes half. So x, square root x plus 10 inverse. 10 inverse square root x. Is it clear? That's the answer. Yeah. So this is enough, right? There's nothing uh, extra to do. No. Okay. One minute, let me keep my laptop on charging. Okay. Okay, let's move further to the book. Okay, this exercise 3.5 is done and now we are moving towards the, uh, now there are some questions that you can do for practice from exercise 3.5. Like the questions from five till 20, if you drew then there will be good practice for the implicit differentiation. Okay. 
we now starting 3.6 which is the derivatives of logarithmic functions the logarithmic functions are those which are in the form of log like y equals to log x now if someone asks us to find the derivative of logarithmic function then it becomes 1 over x ln b and the derivative of ln x natural logarithm log, natural logarithmic function ln x derivative will be 1 over x this rule is mostly used okay let's uh, implement these rules on the example number one and let's try to understand logarithmic differentiation and example one is we have to differentiate y equals to the function is y equals to ln x raised to the power 3 plus 1 okay okay looking at the function we we come to know that there is a natural logarithmic because there is ln and we know that what is the derivative for ln x it's 1 over x so the derivative of ln x cube plus 1 will be 1 over x cube plus 1 and then we'll be taking the by applying the chain rule we can take the derivative of inner function mm. okay the derivative of ln x is 1 over x that's what we know so taking the derivative of function y dash equals to ln x cube uh, plus 1 so derivative will becomes 1 over x cube plus 1 and then taking the derivative of x cube plus 1 it becomes 3x square plus 0 so the answer is y dash equals to 3x square x cube plus 1. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. That's back to the book. Again, we have to find out the derivative of ln sin x. y equals to ln sin x. Okay, taking the derivative of y it becomes y dash. And then we know that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So it becomes 1 over sin x. And applying the chain rule so sine x derivative we have to take it again so 1 over sine x uh, the derivative of sine x is cosine yeah, x. Cosine, yeah cosine x so y dash equals to cosine x over sine x mm, a long time ago i think in, before the two sessions we studied the identity that cos x over sin x is equals to something that is equals to cot x so y dash is equals to cot x is it clear yeah okay but uh, cos over sin is enough right yeah, if we uh, complete our question like um, on this point, I think that is okay if we, if we don't know the identity. 
Okay. Okay, let's back to the book. Uh, the example three is f of x, uh, differentiate f of x, which is square root of ln x. Square root of ln x. So f dash of x equals to can we write our function like this ln x raised to the power half? Yeah. So no power minus. Mm -hmm. minus half, right? Uh, y minus half, it's only uh, the square root is on okay. the in the uh, denominator, I'm in the numerator and it's positive. Oh, okay. So power first minus one from the power becomes minus half and then taking the derivative of ln x. So one over two ln x divided by and the derivative of ln x is one over x. Is it clear? Okay, so it becomes f dash of x equals to one over two x square root of ln x. Um, is it clear? Moving to the example number four, which is differentiate f of x, which is equals to log base 10, two plus sine x. And let's write, let me write down the question here. Example number four. f of x equals to log base 10, two plus sine x. Can we apply this uh, rule? Because we have logarithmic function. So d over dx of log base b, x is one over x ln b. Dy by dx of log base b, x is one over x ln b. Why I don't know what does ln mean. Ln ln b is yeah. uh, ln is natural logarithmic natural log of b. Ln so is natural. Is like? uh, ln is natural log, and b is natural log of b. Natural log of base. B is the base. Okay. Okay. Okay, and B base can be 10. So taking the derivative of the function f dash of x equals to log base is 10 here and the x is 2 plus sine x, right? So the derivative will be 1 over x is 2 plus sine x and the natural log of base which is 10. Right, and then we have an inner function, so we have to take the derivative of inner function again, which is 2 plus sine x. So f dash of x equals to 1 plus 2 plus sine x natural log of 10, and the derivative of two is zero and the derivative of sine x is cos x. Is it clear? 
Yeah. Okay. So f dash of x equals to cos x over two plus sine x ln ten. That's the answer. Uh, do you have any question regarding any question that we have done so far? Uh, no, no, no. But uh, I need like if I have like if I have uh, okay, I'm going to do them now. Mm -hmm. uh, like revision. If I have any like specific questions, can mm -hmm. I can I ask you on WhatsApp? Mm, yeah, sure. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. So until uh, right now, nothing. Okay. So in the example five, oh, okay, we have done till example number four, and uh, heading to the example number five, which is dy by dx of ln x plus one over square root of x minus two. Example number. Five. So we have to find out the derivative of ln x plus one and square root x minus two. So we know that the derivative of ln x is one over whatever the function is inside the ln will come down. So x plus one over, right? Mm -hmm. And then taking the derivative of the inside function, which is x plus one square root x minus two. One over. Okay, applying um, uh, quotient rule. So square root x minus two as it is. And the derivative of x plus one is one minus sign x plus one. Okay, and then it is x minus two half power first minus one from the power, it becomes minus half, right? Yeah. Okay, and then taking the derivative of x minus two, it becomes one only, divided by x minus two whole square. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. one over x plus one square root x minus two it becomes x minus two minus half x plus one and can i write x minus two minus half as x minus two in the numerator and then we have x minus two whole square okay whole square and x minus two whole square multiply with half. Uh, is it clear to you so far? Yeah. Okay. One over x plus one square root x minus two. Okay, two cancel out with two, only left with x minus two in the denominator. Okay, yes. and, uh, and then we have, hmm, can we cross multiply it? It becomes x minus two minus 
half x plus 1, the whole divided by square root x minus 2. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. We just cross multiplied it. So x minus 2, square root x minus 2, square root becomes x minus 2 only. Minus sign, half x plus 1, and then we just multiply the denominators. So it becomes x square root x minus 2 on the whole. Can I take square root x minus 2 in the you know, numerator? It becomes square root x minus 2 or x plus 1. Is it, is it clear to you so far? Yes. Okay. So we have now x minus 2 minus, okay, multiplying half with the term. So it will become minus half x minus half. And then square root x minus 2 multiplying with x minus 2. Is it clear? Mm. This is cancel out. Outside is left x plus 1 and x minus 2. x minus x minus half x will be x only? No, it will be half x, right? x minus half x will be half x, yes. Okay, and minus 2 minus 1 by 5, uh, minus 2 min half will be minus okay. 5 over 2. Okay. Okay, and then we have 1 over x plus 1. Taking half common, so it becomes x minus 5 inside and divided by x minus 2. Okay. Okay. Multiplying half outside, so it becomes half x plus 1 and x minus 5 divided by x minus 2. Is it clear? So the answer is x minus 5, 2, x plus 1, x minus 2. That is dy by dx. Is, is this question clear to you? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's do this one. The question was that we have to find the f dash of x and f of x is equals to ln x. Example number six. F dash of x, you have to find out, and f dash of f of x is ln x. Okay, so this symbol. Two straight lines are used for absolute values. It means that whatever the value of it, if it's minus five, then it becomes five. If it's five, then it becomes five only. Whatever the value of uh, inside the function, if it's negative, then it makes it positive. It gives us the absolute value of the function. What if the the negative okay. side is outside the the the, the absolute um, value? Uh, you mean something like this? Yeah. Then it will be minus five. 
if, if it's inside the absolute uh, function, then it becomes positive. If it's positive, then it's positive. If it's negative, then it becomes negative, uh, positive. Okay. okay. So we okay, have. If it was minus, mm, then sorry? Absolute, if, it was the, if there was minus and then absolute value, minus five. So minus outside, minus inside. It will become positive? Mm, you mean minus? You mean if, if you have the function like this, right? Yeah. Minus outside will be minus as it is. Minus five will become five. So it becomes minus okay. five. Minus five. Okay. Yeah. Come on. But we don't know what is the value of x. It can be positive, it can be negative. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to do for both situations. If it is positive, okay, it, if it is positive, it's like ln x. If it is negative, then it becomes ln minus x, right? Hmm. x means it, its value should be greater than zero because that that, that it will make um, ln x positive greater than zero it, it can be one two three four five hmm. and if it is less than zero then it becomes minus zero one two three four five minus one minus two minus three okay we have to take the derivative of both the situations The derivative of ln x is 1 over x, right? Okay. And the derivative of ln minus x is mm, uh, the ln x was 1 over x. So ln minus x will become minus 1 over minus x, right? Okay. And then we derivate the minus x again. So it becomes minus one over x minus one. Is it clear? Yeah. So it but becomes. With the, with the, with the again. Uh, which function? You said the, we have to drive the x separately. Why? The minus x. Uh, because we have minus one. If if I if I break it like this, minus one multiply with x. Then then it is not. Um, in the x form purely it is it is multiplied with the con, uh, constant so we have double differentiated i mean the differentiated if it is was 2x then we can then we have to uh, differentiate it again right okay okay so it becomes 1 over x even if we differentiate the ln minus x if x less than 0 So in both cases, the derivative, if it's less than zero or greater than zero, both in both cases, the derivative of f of f function f of x is one over x. So the derivative of ln x is one over x. Is it clear to you? Yeah. 